So first thing I want to do is I want to test this capacitor. To do that, I'm going to place the red lead in the scale right here, which has the capacitance symbol on it. And the black lead, let's get it untangled here, is going to snap right into common. Now, switch it over to the capacitance tester, which is this symbol here, which is the universal symbol for a capacitor. And let's take our leads and go across two terminals of the capacitor. Now this is a dual capacitor. So we have a common terminal here, one terminal here, Herm, for the hermetic compressor, one here for the fan. So let's check it out and see how fast of a reading this actually gets us here. A pretty quick response time. We've got about 4.7 microfarads and it's rated for five. So it's also rated for 45 on the hermetic side, so let's check that as well. And there it comes into play, you see about 45. Took a little bit longer on that higher capacitance to pick up the reading, but it's there nonetheless. So we've got it. Let's take a look at another function on this. Let's take a look at ohms. Let's say we want to ohm out a motor. For example, I've got this induced draft motor. And I want to test it to see if it's open or if the windings inside are blown out. So I'm going to set this to the ohms value. Let me get our backlight to come back on. And simply take the leads and put them in here. And it sees that we're running about 4.5, 4.5 ohms of resistance. Now I think this is a pretty cool feature that comes in handy. You see a button right here, relative, and a delta symbol, so that means difference, the Greek symbol for delta. I can hit this button now. The delta symbol appears in the upper corner of the meter, and now everything else I check the ohms value on will be relative to this initial reading. So let's just take a look here. When I touch my leads together, normally I would have zero ohms, but since I locked in 4.5 as my baseline reading, showing me that I'm negative. Let me get a good connection here. Found negative 4.5 ohms, showing me that I have a relative difference of negative 4.5 ohms from my initial reading. So, kind of a neat little function to get rid of it, simply press it down again. Okay, so let's see this meter in use. Here we're working on a gas furnace. Let's show you something. The strap here can come in real handy. Now the Velcro here does give us one feature that other straps don't, is the ability to adjust the height that we want the meter to hang at. So if that was too high, simply lower it down, and we can get it to a spot that's good for our eye level. We've got the lead set up to read voltages. Right now we're not calling for anything, so we're gonna turn this furnace on. Start measuring some voltages. So right now I have it set to voltage. We're on the AC scale. Let me get the backlight on here. And let's just see. We know the induced draft motor's working, but let's measure the voltage to it. We come right in the back of this Molex connector. And I can see I'm measuring a 120.3. There's never going to be any such thing as true 120, but 120.3. So we can see our measurement we're making there. We can see the hot surface igniter starting to glow and the burners are lit. So that means the gas valve's got to be on. So with this Lennox furnace, I can come right into the back of these electrical connectors and see that I got 26 volts to the gas valve. I could go across the switches, and if a switch is closed, meaning these safety switches are good, I should read zero volts. And now I picked up, what, a thousandth of a volt, so that means this rollout switch is closed. And this rollout switch is closed. Okay, so that's the voltage functions. I'm not going to show you the amperage functions because as I said, I'm not a big fan of measuring amperage in line unless it's a very small measurement on a digital circuit that I'm working with. Um, let's turn the system off for a minute and let's ohm something out and see what it measures up at. 
So now that we've got the gas valve shut off, the induced draft motor is slowing down here. Uh, let's ohm out the induced draft motor. Let's say pretend. Let, let's perhaps say that we were calling for heating, and we measured voltage to the motor, but the motor wasn't turning. You want to verify that the motor is actually shorted. Well, we would come in here, stick our test leads right in here, and ohm out the motor. Let's set it to the ohm scale. Here we're reading that the motor has 8.5 ohms of resistance. If this motor were open, meaning that the windings had broken, you'd have zero, or you'd have OL, open line or infinite resistance, kind of like you'd see here. And if the windings inside had shorted out to each other, you'd read zero ohms of resistance, kind of like you'd see doing this. So, gives us some features. So now that we've showed you how to check voltage and how to check ohms, let's check the flame sensor. To do that, we make sure our meter is set to the microamp symbol. That's that little UA. And now the best way to do it is you've got to test in series with the flame sensor. So here's the flame sensor. I could pull the lead off right here and just kind of try to shove my volt meter lead into this terminal here. The challenge is, if I do this enough times, I'm really going to stretch this connector out. This meter didn't come with alligator clips, so if this is your meter of choice, a set of alligator clips is a great resource to have so you can do things like this. Now take my other black lead and I'm going to touch it directly to the flame sensor. That's going to put it in series. Now let's turn the furnace on. And when that burner lights and that flame sensor sees fire, it should complete a DC circuit and allow us to see the microamps come up. Following the sequence of operation, there's the induced draft motor. Next thing is that the pressure switch will make. And in just a few seconds, we should see the hot surface igniter start to glow bright orange. There it goes. Finally, we're going to hear a click and our gas valve will get energized. Burner's light. And we can see that our microamps there is reading 0.3. Well, let me see if we can adjust the range on this. So 0 0.5, 0 0.9, there we go, a little bit better. It's hard to make a good connection without these alligator clips in place. But I've got about a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 microamp reading on this flame sensor which tells me right now that this flame sensor's probably got a little dirt on it and I need to clean it because I should see at least one microamp on an average for a good strong signal. Now notice this though, as soon as I take the lead off, my furnace is going to shut off because it no longer sees the flame sense is present. So that's the only challenge when you're checking flame sensing is that you want to make sure that you check it and as soon as you turn off the, the uh, take the lead off, know that it's going to shut down. So we'll shut the furnace off and we'll reconnect that. Let's undo the strap here for a second. Pull it out of our way. And just for giggles, let's show you the effectiveness of that flashlight. If I needed to read that model number tag in there, if I needed some good readings off the top of that induced draft motor, I could see them. Maybe off the fan motor there, pressure switch ranges. So it gives you a little nice little extra function of a flashlight right at the touch of your fingers. We have our min, our max button, so we can collect the minimum and maximum of any of the ranges we've measured. And again, the rubberized case gives it a good strong fill. Really like the AM520 meter. Personally, I'm a little bit more of a fan of a clamp meter, but if you're a fan of a handheld meter, especially if you're doing fine electronics or digital controls, this is a great meter of choice. Thanks for tuning in to Toolbox Tuesday, and we'll talk to you next time.